Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabati fillah Continue on in our study of Bulugh Amaram Kitab al-Jami' We reach the second bab after the Bab of Adab in the chapter, which is Bab Al-Bir Wasila. The chapter of kindness and joining the ties of relationship or the ties of kinship. And in this chapter, the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we will uh, study is a group of ahadith which refer to the importance of maining, maintaining the ties of kinship and the importance of extending effort to maintain those ties and those relations with one's kin. And these ahadith fit under al-ihsan and husnul khulq. They are a part of uh, righteous in righteousness, and they're a part part of uh, good manners. And that's why the chapter itself is entitled uh, Bab. Al-Bir Wasila, the chapter of kindness or goodness or righteousness, if you will, and joining the ties of kinship. So this is all a part and fits under the mannerisms. And this is why uh, Imam Ibn Hajr uh, grouped these ahadith together. Uh, under this uh, bab. And bitter walidain, meaning the kindness to the parents, is what the term bitter references here. So here it's not just the general bitter, and we talked about that uh, in the when we first began studying this chapter, the chapter on manners about bitter, that this is, uh, uh, you know, along with piety and has a relationship with taqwa. With ta'awun ala biri wa taqwa, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. You know, cooperate in goodness and righteousness. And the bir that is referenced here is the bir, bir uh, awalidain. Bitter meaning the kindness towards one's uh, parents. And then, wasila. And then uh, the kinship or those who you have uh, the, that relationship with, the relationship of kinship. And more specifically, <clears throat> the sila here, it refers to sila til arham. وَبِرُ وَلَدَيْنِ دَاخُلْ فِي سِلَةَ الرَّحَمْ أَيْدًا لِأَنَّهُمَ أَقْرَبُ الرَّحَمْ وَأَعْظَمْ الرَّحَمْ Imam bin Baz, Rahmatullah alayhi, Rahmatullah wasiya, he mentions that bitter, the bitter here, it refers to bitter walidain, the kindness of uh, to one's parents, and sila here, <coughs> uh, the sila, the, 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 the relationship or the kinship, refers to the silat al-arham, so more specifically, the relationship of the, uh, that you have to your mother, specifically, uh, and the, and the, the female relatives, and that bir walidain fits under, or is included in this sila, and both of them uh, are a reference to the closeness uh, uh, in the ties of kinship and the 
greatest of that, of course, is the relationship with one's parents and one's mother specifically. <clears throat> then the Imam, he mentions, before getting into this hadith as an introduction to this group of ahadith, وَبِرُّهُمَا مِنْ أَحَمَّ wajibat, Having bitter walidain, being righteous to one's kinship and one's uh, parents specifically, is one of the most important obligations. That's very important for us to, to understand this. Uh, as it comes in many ahadith and many uh, ayat which refer to the importance of bitter walidain, uh, uh, and and the sinfulness of leaving that duty. So then, therefore, since we know that when we talk about wajibat, we're talking about those things which are an obligation upon you to fulfill. And that by leaving those same things, that means it's a sin to leave it. That's what we mean by wajib in, in, in fiqh, from the ahkam of khamsa. So, when it comes to Bitter walidain, that's one of the a'dham wajibat. That's one of the greatest wajibat that you can do. And what... And it is affirmed through the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَعَقُوكُهُمَا مِنْ أَقْبَحْ الْكَبَائِرِ That <clears throat> being disobedient to one's parents is from the wicked, from the one of the most wicked sins you could do. One of the greatest sins that you can commit. It's from the major sins to be disobedient to one's parents. And subhanAllah, if only our youth understood this, especially those young youth coming up and our youth who are in the streets around the world, that they need this tojihad. They need to know, understand that many of them are falling into one of the greatest sins amongst the many that they fall into. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and them and guide us and them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes a comparison between the right of the parents and the right to worship him and him alone. So that's dalil right there. That's evidence to show how important this right is, this important, this right, this bitter walidain. that this is one of the most important adab from the adab that one should uh, observe and it is one of the most important duties of, of the wajibat and hukuk that we can uh, fulfill is this bitter walidain and this obedience to uh, our parents and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has <clears throat> mentioned that, coupled that along and made a comparison with his haq. And what is his haq? According to the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jawa radiallahu ta'ala when he was riding with the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on a donkey and the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, Ya Mu'adh, tidri ma haq Allah ali ibadi wa ma haq al ibadi ala Allah. O Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon a servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? He said, Allah wa Rasulu wa alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Haqqallah al ibadi and ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. The right of Allah upon his servant is that you, you worship him and him alone and do not associate partners with him. So that's the haq, the right of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined this haq, his right. He made a comparison, subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the bir walidayn with the, 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 the righteousness to one's parents. He mentioned that along with his right, showing that that's sharf upon the right rights of the parents. And that shows how important, and that's an, it's an important wajib. It's an important <clears throat> haq, an important right over us, that of our parents. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many, many shortcomings. And this is mentioned in many ayat, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, and Ashkur li wa li walidayk. Uh, 
ان نشكر لي ولوالديك الى 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 المصير او الى المصير الله سبحانه وتعالى mentions in surah al-luqman that if you thank me and your parents then this is your you know this is a righteous destination and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem wa qada rabbuka ala ta'budu illa iyahu bil walidayn ihsana Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fi kitab al-kareem in surah al-isra verse 23 wa qada rabbuka and your lord has commanded ala ta'budu illa iyahu and that you do not worship anyone except him illa iyahu wa bil walidayn ihsana and to your and to your parents or to the parents be you know righteous and good all giving all the goodness all the obedience obedience and ta'atillah of course obedience and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is a right of the parents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with and he has coupled it along with Tawheed so that shows us it's one of the greatest uh, duties that we can fulfill and there are many ayat in which this is the case and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise, which is very important for us to understand and showing us, illustrating the importance of this chapter, Bir Walidayn, Bir Al Bir Wasila, what also illustrates for us the importance of this, of this great right over us, <coughs> is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has compared Aquq bi shirk. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has compared disobedience to one's parents and mentioned it along with And it was mentioned in a hadith which also illustrates for us how severe shirk is and the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as is mentioned in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a comparison or mentioned along with shirk and that being such a severe sin and as we s mentioned uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned وَأَعْذَ مَا نَاهَا أَنْهُ أَشِرْك and the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited or the most severe is shirk is shirk and the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coupling along with shirk mentioning aquqa walidain disobedience to one's parents this shows us how severe it is listen to this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi sahihain min hadith abi bakrata al-thaqafi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam anahu qal ala unnabiyakum bi akbar kabair ala unnabiyakum bi akbar kabair ala unnabiyakum bi akbar kabair kunna bala ya rasulullah qal al ishraqu billahi wa aquq walidain in this hadith in bukhari and muslim we see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam stressed and emphasized the seriousness of the sin and then and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was mentioning he emphasized it so much he could have sufficed by saying it once but this was to show the severity and this was for the educational effect the ta'lim for his ummah so that they would know and understand the seriousness of this sin and they would take this to heart and they would be mindful and they would avoid it ijtinab hadh al-ma'asi this is very serious. So the Prophet ﷺ said, 
Should I not tell you of the greatest sin? And then he mentioned it again. Should I not tell you of the greatest sin? Or should I not tell you of the 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 the, the greatest sins? Or Akbar Kabair, the 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 greatest sin? And they the companions with their hurs al al ilm, their 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 vigilance and seeking knowledge and their want for knowing the good and want for knowing the evil. As we mentioned that some Sahaba like uh, Hudayfa bin Yaman and others were very uh, serious. They wanted to know that which would harm them as well as that which was good. And so they said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, you know, tell us, you know. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Committing shirk with Allah, you know, associating partners with Allah, and aqukuh walidain, and disobedience to one's parents. So that shows us the seriousness of this sin, and that it's been coupled by Allah subhanahu wa taala fi kitabi al kareem wa qadar rabbuka la ta'budu illa yahu bil walidain yasana, and your Lord has ordered you, has commanded you to be obedient to your parents, and your Lord has commanded you to not worship anyone except Him. وَقَضَى رَبُّكُمْ وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ وَقَضَى رَبُّكُمْ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So your Lord has commanded you to not worship anyone, not associate any partners with Him. And to parents, give إِحْسَان. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has... Uh, commanded Tawheed to worship him and him alone, prohibited shirk, and commanded obedience to one's parents and righteousness and, and, and goodness and kindness in all of its very forms to one's parents. And that necessitates, that necessitates negating disobedience to one's parents. Imam bin Baz, he mentions about this. He says, فَقَرَنَ الْعَقُوكَ مَعَ الشِّرْكَ فَدَلَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ بَرَّهُمَا مِنْ أَحَمَّ الْوَاجِبَاتِ وَهُوَ قَرِينَ التَّوْحِيدِ وَعَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْعَقُوكَ هُمَا مِنْ أَقْبَحْ سَيِّيَاتِ وَهُوَ قَرِينَ الشِّرْكَ Imam bin Baz mentioned about this, this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says that so, disobedience to one's parents was compared with shirk. You know, it was, men or it was mentioned alongside of shirk. Disobedience, uh, you know, uh, worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, associating a partner with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, and this is evidence that obedience to them, meaning one's parents, is from one of the most important wajibat, one of the most important acts of obedience that a person can do. And it is associated and related or shares importance with Tawheed, with worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, monotheism, Tawheed, ar the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tawheed, al the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, with Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat, and uh, the oneness, the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes that they are unique to him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. There is nothing which is like him and he is the all-hearing and all-seeing. So uh, along with this duty to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the duty of being obedient to one's parents. That's a wajib that is one of the most important wajibat. And then he said, and disobedience to them is from one of the most wicked sins. And it is uh, compared or coupled along with shirk. It's mentioned along with shirk. And that's what the whole point of mentioning this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah unabbi akum bi akbar al kabair should I not tell you of the most serious sin, of one of the greatest sins? 
may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it. Ameen. And bless us to be obedient to our parents and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the most important relationship that one can maintain is that relationship with one's parents and especially with one's mother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those people who disobeyed him from before, that they tufsidu fil ard wa yaqti'u arhamakum. That they, they disobey, they, uh, they cause wickedness, they spread wickedness around the earth and they cut the ties of kinship. So those were the traits of the disobedient ones in the prior nations. And in fact, we see these traits exhibited in contemporary times, this negative evil that we have to avoid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know what is the recompense for people who are disobedient to their parents and all and and and, and spread wickedness through the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ulaika Ladina Allah Fa asamuhum wa a'ma absaruhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people are cursed uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah curses them. And he will make them uh, blind and deaf on, on, on Yom al -Qiyama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-Kareem, وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ أَحْضُ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ وَيَقْتَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلُ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ أَلَّعْنَةُ وَلَهُمْ سُوَ الدَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتابه الكريم And those who break the covenant they have with Allah after they they made this pact with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to be obedient and do, do those acts of obedience and follow his commands. They broke it. And, and, وَيَقْتَعُونَ مَا أَمْرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُسَلُ And they broke or they separated or they, they, they broke those ties that Allah has commanded us to maintain. And then, as if that wasn't sufficient, then they spread wickedness and evil throughout the earth, like we see some of the nations in this time who do nothing but spread evil throughout the earth and have a position of imperialism and a position of, of evil and spreading wickedness. You find people who do nothing good for humanity but spread wickedness and break the covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, had made with them, that they enacted with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they were supposedly solidifying with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then they broke the covenant. وَعِيَادِ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ so they spread wickedness throughout the earth. And in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions, Ulaika lahum al-la'natu wa lahum su'addar. And upon them is curses and a wicked abode. A wicked abode. Meaning jahannam. Wa'iyadhim billah. Wa'iyakum. Min al-nar. So all of this shows how serious it is cutting the ties of kinship and especially the parents and disobedience to parents and how that is one of the greatest sins. And it shows us that that is why Imam al hafiz Ibn Hajr al Askanani, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiyah why he titled this chapter Bab al birra Al Birra Wasila, you know the chapter of uh, of of of, uh, of of good treatment or kindness and keeping the ties, keeping relations, and so it's very important for us 
to take these ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into account as we study them. As we said, Al-Bir, and as the chapter is titled, Bab Bir Wasila, the chapter of kindness and joining the ties of relationship. Another important um, difference that we need to keep in mind as Imam bin Uthaymeen rahmatullahi rahmatan wasiya mentions with regards to this uh, this title heading um, bitter wasila he mentions the bitter lil walidain you know this uh, righteousness or kindness if you will uh, with regards to parents it refers to kathrata Ita, which means uh, it, it refers to doing uh, these kindnesses, this goodness, biketra, meaning lots of it. And the sila, the sila tilil aqarib, wahiya mujarid wusul. So that's a faida. He said that when uh, the reference to sila to akarib or sila lil akarib, the um, joining the ties of uh, kinship or relationship, relationships meaning kinship, that it what's meant here is the wasul al ita is the giving and maintaining this uh, uh, you know this giving to to give and to uh, and ba basically to to maintain this so he distinguishes and says between the two by saying فالبير أعمق وأكثر that when we talk about bir, bir walidain, you know, the, the, the kindness to the parents, that this is uh, more, this is deeper. This is deeper. This is on another level. And it is more. So it's more and it's, it's much deeper because this is the kindness to the parents. And so, uh, and, and of course, this shows the hakuk the rights of the parents. This illustrates the rights of our parents over us, that it is a much deeper right, and there is more. So we should be doing more. That's the first and foremost, is those parents. And the sila refers to or what it, what's meant by you know maintaining this relationship is that we don't cut our ties of relationship. So that's why you know the the relationship with the parents is much deeper, and it's much more that you're you're doing those kindnesses and being obedient to your parents, whereas your akadib, your relatives in general, you just want to maintain those ties. So maybe you're calling them every so often, you're visiting, doing some kindnesses. But your mother and your father, you have obedience to, you are respectful at all times, and you're doing much, much more. So hopefully that, that uh, gives us an idea and distinguishes for us a bit. Hopefully I'm able to articulate that, that those rights, that even in this, uh, even in this mutarjam, or this, this, this title, the subtitle Bab Bir uh, Bab Al Bir Wasila that this illustrates those hakuk and how uh, the to the extent of which each of those uh, you know the relatives in the family uh, and our and our parents for example the how we differentiate between their rights that's the parents rights is much greater and that's why the silata um, or the bitter, bitter walidain 
is a much stronger right over us. Moving on to the first hadith, <clears throat> uh, narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, He who wishes to have his provisions expanded and his term of life prolonged must treat his relatives well. Reported by Al Bukhari. In this authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, uh, this is a most appropriate uh, hadith to begin this this bab or this chapter with, in that it illustrates the uh, the importance and the reward that one uh, obtains by being good with their relatives, by maintaining those ties. So it shows us the importance of keeping the ties of kinship. And one of the main benefits uh, that we gain from this hadith is we see that it encourages, it's a in immense encouragement to maintain the uh, the ties of kinship, you know, not cutting off the relatives and so forth, or or, or one's parents, bin Babylola, you know, first and foremost, one's parents, and it is a encouragement to maintain those ties. And the way in which it encourages us to maintain those ties is it mentions the reward. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned the reward in the hadith itself. That if you want to have your life extended, if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to have your life extended and you want your risk, your provisions increased, then this is one of the key means because it's mentioned right here before you this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that's how it encourages us to do these righteous acts which is maintain the ties of kinship that this will help us to increase our risk and help us to uh, extend our life and those are things which are beloved to most people most people uh, want their lives to be extended in, in righteousness or in happiness and most people desire wealth. The second uh, benefit fawaid of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is it shows us that the maintaining the ties of kinship is a reason for a person to have a lot of wealth and to have an increase in wealth and a law and longevity in their life. So these are very important characteristics of the mu'min and that's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and yubsata alayhi fi rizqihi wa an yunsa lahu fi athrihi that the uh, reward, if you will, for maintaining those ties of kinship is that a person will have their uh, the risk increased and their life extended. So that's very, very uh, important for us. Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is it affirms the uh, that that subab you know, that reasons behind things that happen in the shara or happen in our lives, that there are reasons for it, and that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith, he uh, illustrated or articulated for us the reason and the the cause and the reason. And the uh, 
the cause for an extension in one's uh, life and their provision is that they maintain the ties of kinship. That's the cause and the effect or the, uh, the, the effect, if you will, is that their riz is, is uh, increased and their, their life is extended. So the cause and effect. In the next hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith 1253 narrated Jubair ibn Mut'im radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, the one who severs ties, meaning the, the blood uh, relations, will not enter paradise. This is a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith illustrates for us the same hukum. And here, it it the first hadith was a, uh, a targhib. You know, it encouraged us to do these acts because it mentioned the, the cause and the effect. You know, it mentioned some reward that we would obtain in this life. And, and something that is beloved to us all. And this hadith mentions the aquba, the punishment. So it's from the bab al tarhib. You know, it's giving, it's putting striking fear into us to avoid, uh, to avoid cutting the ties of kinship. So this is very, very important because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who severs ties of blood relations will not enter paradise. So the one who cuts this ties, the ties of kinship, they will not enter uh, paradise. So that's a threat of punishment that, uh, that if you do this uh, act, you know, you're cutting yourself off from Jannah. So that is a very powerful, very powerful uh, um, uh, warning and a severe warning and something for us to reflect on in our relationships with our relatives that we should strive our utmost. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, advising myself and then you. Uh, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and maintain those ties of kinship because there are so many ayat and so many ahadith which illustrate for us and uh, show the obligation to maintain those ties of kinship and that it is punishable and that it is madhmoon and sinful to cut those ties. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ أَحْضُ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاكِهِ وَيَقْتَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُسْلَى وَيُفْسِلُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ أَلَّعْنَةُ وَلَهُمْ سُوءَ الدَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and, and he said, mentioned, uh, similar to this in Surah Al-Baqarah and in many places in the Quran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayat, in Surah al raad verse uh, 35, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, And those who stand in the way and those who sever or break the contract, the uh, that, that which they have entered this contract with Allah Azza wa Jal. This is something that We've entered into a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have to maintain these ties. And especially, this is in reference to Bani Israel, you know, the way they broke those ties. They were ordered to, and they entered into a contract with Allah Azza wa Jal over, or, uh, to, to maintain those ties of kinship. But then they broke it, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَنْقُضُونَ أَخْضُ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاكِ And those who break the, uh, the, the, the contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or this pact with Allah Azza wa Jal uh, after 
they have uh, contracted it, you know, after they have agreed to this. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَقْتَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ And they cut or sever what Allah has commanded. What did Allah command? He commanded us to be uh, to be righteous with your parents, serving your parents, kindness with your parents, and maintain those silat arham, and to maintain those those ties of kinship. So they break and sever that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Uh, and Yusuf, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded this to uh, the, this these uh, these ties to be, you know, these relationships and these bonds to, to be maintained. But those people who are mithmum, who are sinful and wicked, they cut those ties. How do we know it's wicked? What's the big deal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ And they spread wickedness throughout the earth. So this is a part of that wickedness, is that they cut those ties. But the, this is referring to the children of Bani Israel, that they spread, those, those who went astray, they spread the wickedness throughout the earth. They caused wickedness. They were a source of evil. So they broke the contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They severed what he ordered to maintain, which is the ties of kinship, and that's the shahid here. That's the point here. Well, you've seen it feel all, and, and spread wickedness throughout the earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this ayah, he says, Verily, those are the ones that are cursed and they will have a wicked abode. So, that is very clear from that ayah and from this hadith that we're studying at hand. The one who, who does this sin. That this is something, this is from evil. And this is a type of wickedness and sinfulness, meaning cutting the ties of relationship. We are ordered to maintain those ties. So that is high powered. If we really reflect upon that, especially with us being from Ahl Sunnah, striving to follow the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even with all of our taqseer, with all of our, 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 our mistakes and all of our shortcomings, that if we're true about that, then we'll be striving to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do what we're ordered and commanded to do. That's what it's about. Fulfilling the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And from those commands is maintaining the ties of kinship. So what we learn uh, from this hadith is this hadith is evidence that severing the ties of kinship is from the major sins kabair al-dhunub and we know this because what's attached to it is a punishment is the, and, and a severe a severe threat of punishment and what is that that the person will not enter paradise and who from amongst the mu'mineen well, Muslimin could ever deny that that is their, that that is uh, not their ultimate goal, which is to enter paradise. So, of course, we have to strive our utmost to fulfill this duty. So, this is evidence that this is from our duties, and to leave it, and that this is a stern uh, punishment, and that it's punishable to cut those ties. In the next hadith. Narrated uh, Mughira Ibn Shu'ba radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah has made unlawful for you disobedience to your mothers bearing your daughters alive holding back what Allah has ordered and demanding what you are not entitled to and he hates for you engaging in gossip, asking many questions about those things which are not necessary, and squandering wealth. 
This is another authentic hadith, which also, and the reason it's in this bab, uh, in this chapter, is because it is showing us that, that those are some of the major sins, and from amongst those major sins is disobedience to one's mother. And that's one of the first things that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned in this hadith. And so it's an encouragement for you and I to be much better with our, 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 our mothers especially. Uh, from the fawaid of this hadith, and there are many, uh, first, This hadith, this hadith illustrates and affirms that the halal and the haram are from Allah Azza wa Jal. That it is not for anyone to make something lawful, unlawful, or something which is unlawful, lawful. That that is, was determined by Allah Azza wa Jal, and on the tongue of his and action of his messenger, sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. However, with regards to that, in determining what is lawful and what is unlawful, the ulama have a a sharing in that. Because they are striving, because of, based on their knowledge of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, because it's not simply you just push a button and then you know the answer, or you read an ayat and that is just clear every single situation, but rather it takes the ijtihad of the ulama to strive to deduce from those texts, from those uh, textual sources, about the issues of the shar, to know the halal and the haram. But ultimately, the halal and the haram is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And we know that in this hadith, because the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allaha harrama. So verily Allah uh, has made unlawful for you. And then he listed the things uh, in this hadith which are unlawful. Those things which are punishable. Uh, punishable and in, in that they will be punishable in the hereafter and and there's a stern warning against those sins and so this comes from Allah Azza wa Jal and this is from the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also from this point that we're mentioning that this, make it, that the halal and the haram is from Allah Azza wa Jal, and the caution in which the ulama and especially less than them, students and others, have to be careful when it comes to the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that we do not say things and speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. Meaning, speaking about his deen without knowledge. This is a major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَسِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُكُمْ أَلْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتُرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kirim and do not say uh, and you know uh, say on, on your tongues you know and speak uh, you know without knowledge and lying that this is lawful and this is unlawful and end up lying uh, about telling a lie 
about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important, and this is a warning for everyone. This is even for the ulama, that they have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they make ahkam. You know, when they make judgments even about individuals or about uh, masail, what they call uh, nawazil, fiqh nawazil, new issues come up. Uh, you know, is Snapchat halal or haram? Is this halal or haram? You know, they have to make ijtihad. They look at the nusus and they deduce from the text and they use those principles of ijtihad and their fiqh fi deen in order to determine a ruling about something. And this is why everyone doesn't have a share in this, uh, in ijtihad, in the sense of making these what's halal. Uh, making determining what's halal and what's haram, that we go back to Ahl al Fa'asal Ahl Dhikr in Kuntum La Ta'alamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. And those who are rightfully uh, in that position to have that ijtihad, then they are rewarded double the reward or twice if they are correct in their judgment. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said. And if they make a mistake, they get one reward. So they're still rewarded because they're ahlan. They are, they have the right to make this ijtihad because they are the ones that Allah has favored with knowledge to be able to do that. But if you're not one of those people and you're busy just speaking, as they say, keyboard warriors and others who just speak and say, this is halal, that is haram. And maybe not even a, the person is not even a student of knowledge. Maybe the person is just uh, someone who calls to Islam, but they they didn't have any appropriate training from the ulama, or they are just someone who is just speaking. So many people just speak, and they say, "Oh, I think that's lawful. I think that's unlawful." Then this is a very uh, a danger, and this hadith should be this hadith and this ayah specifically which comes under this fayda that we're mentioning, should be a stern warning to beware of that, because that's a serious, serious sin. Uh, another uh, benefit of this hadith, which we need to consider and, and, and keep uh, in mind, is this hadith shows that tahrim aquq al-umahat, that this is haram, this is impermissible to disobey one's mother, and of course, one's father as well. But here we're specifically talking about and what is uh, clear from the thus itself, from the text itself, is the impermissibility of uh, disobeying one's mother. And that it's one of the major sins because the Prophet ﷺ said, Should I not tell you about the greatest sin or the greatest sins? And this is one of them. Ishraq billah wa aquqa walidain. Committing shirk, associating partners with Allah, polytheism, and Allah coupled that along with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned along with that wa aquqa walidain. And disobedience to one's parents. And in this hadith, it shows aquq al umahat, disobedience to one's mother, specifically. So it emphasizes the right, the mafhum of that, the 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 what we understand from that and is implicit in that is that being obedient to one's mother is what's matlub and mamduh. This is what is intended and what is rewarded. And that the opposite brings with it punishment, disobedience to one, by being disobedient to one's mother. Allah understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many, many, many shortcomings with regards to our parents and our mothers specifically. <laughs> and there are so many ayat and hadith, but we don't want to prolong our discussion about this one point. Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is this hadith also shows us the impermissibility of killing your children, of, of killing your your daughter specifically. And this these are warnings for us through all time, but especially this was a practice 
of the uh, Arabs in Jahiliya. So certain cultures practice this. So this is something that they were tested with from their Jahiliyas. They used to kill their girls. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so this specifically addressed an issue that they dealt with their, in, in their society, but perhaps in a contemporary form that we do this through abortion or in certain societies they target the daughters that this is the, the female children are less loved and beloved and this is a, a, a wicked uh, mistake. Wallahu musta'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our traits of jahiliyyah and all of our evil. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. So what we learn here is that it's completely haram, impermissible. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem also, وَمَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاءُهُ جَهَنَّمُ خَالِدٍ فِيهَا And the one who kills a mu'min intentionally, then their reward is Jahannam, is the hellfire, and they will dwell in there forever. So that's a stern warning. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us, uh, this hadith also illustrates that it is impermissible, it's haram to, uh, to ask for that which you, don't, which you don't have a right to. Not meaning you ask for a favor or something like this, but you are asking and demanding from some, someone something which you don't have the right to, and it could be through deception. You could be trying to steal from someone, saying, no, no, this is really mine and trying to trick the people. You found a way to deceive and steal from people. وَعِيَاذٍ billah. So this is a stern warning and lets us know this is muharram. So people need to, to fear. Anyone who yantasib al-Islam, who relates and associates with Islam, considers himself a Muslim, they need to be avoiding these wicked traits. Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this hadith shows us the impermissibility of uh, prohibiting that which is uh, an obligation to fulfill. So not to be miserly with those things which are, uh, you know, an obligation to fulfill. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is that from the Arabic language, from the asloob of the Arabic language, is that is sometimes there will be uh, something which is mentioned, and we'll find that something mentioned in a hadith, that it uh, is mentioned, for example, in one way, but it has one, the, the hukum is the same. So it, maybe it's mentioned in two different ways, but the hukum, the ruling is the same. And for example, uh, what, and how we learn this and see this illustrated in this hadith, the Prophet والسلام, said, Haram Allah, and then he mentioned, uh, you know, Allah prohibited these things. Wakariya, and also Allah hates kathra taqil waqal. He hates um, excessive speech about, uh, you know, you know, caring tales. He said, she said. So, those are two different tabir. One is that, you know, that this is haram. And the other one, Allah, that Allah has made such and such prohibited. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates such and such. The hukum is the same, it's haram. Meaning that Allah, if Allah hates something, it's muharram. If Allah, uh, you know, that's the asl in that. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates this, hates a practice, then it's, imper it's impermissible. And... If he prohibits a practice, of course, then it is impermissible. So that's what we see also illustrated from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another benefit is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates kathra uh, taqil wa khal. And this is an important uh, thing that we need to talk about. But uh, that, you know, to carry tales, um, things which are unsubstantiated, 
uh, you know, speaking about issues that we, and, 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 you know, he said, she said, looking for the mistakes of people by saying he said, he said, she said, I heard so-and-so said, and you don't even really know. These kind of things are methamum, and we learn this from the hadith, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates this. He hates this practice. And the Prophet sallallahu said in another hadith, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ فَلْيُقُلْ خَيْرًا وَلْيَصْمَتْ Whoever uh, believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, Say something good or keep silent. And there are so much to say about that as well, but we'll move on to for the sake of time. Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is it shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates that a person makes kathar to su'al, meaning that a person makes excessive questioning about something that there's no fa'idah fi. That there's no benefit. So that doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask the ulama, or you shouldn't ask teachers, or you shouldn't ask to be clear, clear in something. No. But when a person is excessive in this, asking for something that really has no benefit, or they're asking so much as if they want to make something haram. You know, they're a trap. Somebody, they get a, a fatwa from a sheikh, and then they want to keep pushing and keep pushing until they can get maybe what they intended to make something haram. Make something difficult on other people by excessive questioning into issues which cause the sheikh is, is spoken maybe out of mercy. And it's not because he's hiding the hukum shara. No, but he's looking. This is fiqh for deen. So being excessive in questioning about certain issues, and especially when there's no fi there's no benefit in it you know, just pure hypothetical scenarios or whatever the case may be, that this is something disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mithmum. It is sinful. It is not uh, permissible to do. Another benefit of this uh, hadith is this hadith also shows us that it is impermissible, as was mentioned, that one of the characteristics that is mithmum here is idha'at al-mal, <coughs> is wasting uh, one's wealth. And a person can waste their wealth in many uh, various ways. So this covers all the various ways of being extravagant, uh, spending your money in things that don't benefit you in the dunya or the hereafter, uh, throwing away money, doing muharram with your money. All of these things fall under idhaat al-mal, wasting uh, wealth. And those are some of the main benefits of this hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad. وعلى أله وصحبه وسلم